Now we've built our model and customized how we want to use Fluid Flow 3, we can get on with the real business of designing our systems. In this video, we will look at the powerful auto pipe sizing feature in Fluid Flow 3. In our model, although we have defined the connectivity or layout of the system and the design flow of 50 meters cubed per hour at our inlet boundary here, we haven't yet made any attempt to control the flow once it leaves the inlet boundary. As flow distribution is governed by the system resistance, and flow tends to take the easiest path, we can see that in its current state the majority of our flow is delivered to the first outlet, and continues to drop off as we move along the header. To address this, we need to implement measures to control our flow to each of the outlets, and the first step in that process is sizing the pipes accordingly. To do that, I'm going to change the model a little bit. Let's assume that each offtake requires the same flow. I'm going to select all our pressure boundaries to have known flows and right click and change the component. And cycle down to select a known or assigned flow. Keep common property values and click OK. Then from the input tab I'm just going to confirm that our flow direction is out of the network and it's 10 meters cubed per hour. Now the model will force that flow through each outtake and allow us to size the pipes. However, in its current state, the model is over constrained. We have specified flows throughout the system, but there's no place for us to specify a reference pressure. In effect, there are multiple solutions possible for this model, so it will never converge. Let's click Calculate and see what happens. You can see immediately we get a calculation error, and if we click on the Messages tab, we see that multiple solutions are possible. So to unconstrain the model, let's change our inlet node to a pressure node that allows us to specify the pressure. And let's set it to 1.5 atmospheres. The exact value doesn't really matter at this stage. We'll examine system pressure in the next video. At this point, we just want to avoid negative pressures occurring from the system. Before I calculate, I'm going to show some results on the flow sheet. Again, let's multi-select our pipes In this case, we're going to show the exact economic size, the velocity, and the stagnation pressure. Let me just change the location of this flow so it's clear. OK, we're ready to go, so let's hit Calculate. You can see immediately that we get a lot of errors, and if we look at our Messages tab, we can see we have absolute static pressure throughout the system. At this point, that's OK, because we haven't sized any of the pipes. The important result we're looking at now is the exact economic size. Fluid flow 3 is the, calculates the most economic pipe size for the system for each pipe element. The equation is complex and based on fluid densities, installed costs, power costs, etc., all of which are fully definable by the users. So now I'm going to go through each pipe and choose a standard pipe size as close as possible to the exact economic size. Now we can recalculate. OK, you can see immediately that the errors have gone, and we have a fairly consistent pressure distribution and velocity throughout the system. You can also see the geometry of the header exactly as you would expect. The diameter is reducing along the line as flow is taken out at each offtake. So in this step, we have forced the required flow through each leg to size our pipes using known flow nodes. Now that we've done that, we can look at using flow controllers and other components to balance the flow profile, which will provide a more representative system.